When we want to make EPRF membranes, it's very similar, in fact, to the previous protocol. So we'll go through it. The main difference is, is that we're going to mix, instead of using the female to female lure lock, it's going to be mixed inside a custom tray. So here's the centrifuge. We're going to centrifuge for 700 RCF for eight minutes, again in the white tube, so no red tubes at all for this. You're going to remove once again with an 18 gauge needle um, the upper two mLs, and that's going to be placed into the bioheat. Okay. Once it's heated for 10 minutes at 75 degrees Celsius, always remember to place the liquid PRF that's remaining into the biocool, and that's going to prevent the clotting. After this 10 minute heating period, now you've created albumin gel. That albumin gel needs to be cooled, so you place it in the biocool for a couple minutes. And then after that, you're going to take the albumin gel and you're just going to lay it out into the bioheat tray. And that's the custom tray. Once that's placed there, you're going to lay it flat and just compress it basically. And then you're going to add in some of the liquid platelet-rich fibrin okay, from the CPRF layer. Then you're going to allow that to clot. That'll take about 15 minutes and then you're ready and you've created an EPRF membrane. These are the membranes that'll typically last four to six months. So let's go through the videos here. So again, we've actually utilized on purpose the same videos just to show colleagues that it's exactly the same protocol here. So you're gonna draw up the first two MLs and I'm gonna do this here with two tubes. Okay, so we're gonna draw two times the upper PPP layer, so the upper two MLs, and there's no platelets here, right? Very few platelets. The platelets are typically at the buffy coat zone. Once this is done, as we've seen previously, okay, we're going to place them in the biocool, and that's going to allow this to extend the working properties of the liquid. So instead of clotting in 15 minutes, it'll clot in 30, 40 minutes. Then we're going to take these blue end pieces and these are simply utilized because we want to prevent the liquid PRF from leaking out into our bio uh, heat machine. Of course, we have to make sure that nothing comes out there. So we're going to place that on and then you can see it's got an end cap and then that goes into the middle layer of the bio heat. The bio heat is set for 75 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Okay, so here's the second one. Okay, so that's gonna now heat for 10 minutes. While that's heating, we have to make sure that the other layer, the CPRF layer is in the biocool. When this is done, immediately what we do is we take this out and we send this directly to the biocool, right? So once we have that, it goes into the biocool and it's gonna then wait for two minutes to cool down. During this time, we could take the tubes, the other ones, the CPRF, and collect the CPRF layer. Now, during this video here, what you're going to see is I'm going to design and place this into the custom tray. Okay, so this is going to be placed into the custom tray. When it's placed in the custom tray, you're then going to basically compress this. Okay, so you're just gonna find a way to flatten it down um, at the base. This is one way of doing it. Or you can use, which is probably even a little bit better, is a little compactor uh, for extraction sites. When you compact the, the bone graft, you can use that as well, basically just to compress this. Okay, so now we're gonna draw the liquid PRF layer. Once that's drawn, we're gonna place it in there. It could be a little bit of red there, no issue at all. Okay, and then you're gonna let that set for 15 minutes. Okay, again, just mix it up a little bit and we'll go through the videos of when this is done. So again, here's another little video that's gonna explain the procedure. So again, first step, we're gonna place the albumin gel into the bottom layer. And then we're going to use a little instrument to basically compact this. And I prefer to use actually that little compactor on the side. It's probably a little bit more effective to do this. Okay, but essentially what you want to do is you just want to make sure that it's evenly distributed on the bottom layer here. So you want a nice even layer and that's going to be your membrane of albumin gel. After this is done, 
you're then going to draw the liquid pure F. Okay, so here we are, we're going to draw up the liquid pure F. And in this case here, you're going to draw up the liquid, maybe a little bit of red blood cells, okay, because we know that the red zone of the Buffy coat is very, very rich. It's going to be applied there. And from there, you're going to make your E pure F membrane. Now, when you actually look at this membrane, um, at the very end, after 15 minutes, you can see that it's very similar to a normal membrane in consistency, okay, but it's got a little bit of albumin incorporation into it, okay, so you can use it and work with it. It's actually stronger than people think, um, and when you, work, when you look at it, you can see that it's uh, a membrane that can be used. That's what can be covered onto titanium, etc., and utilized for different grafting procedures.